The electrical system in a house is often unseen, as its main components are hidden in the structure itself. However, its presence is readily recognized as a creature comfort none of us could imagine living without. Oftentimes, this system is abused by overloading circuits with demand that the system cannot handle safely. Wires then heat up and breakers trip. Such unsafe practices throughout the home can jeopardize the safety of the inhabitants. In order to better understand the different needs of your home, some historical electrical systems will be mentioned. Homes built from about 1915 through 1930 had a technique of wiring called knob and tube wiring. This technique installed bare wires in the home's attic, walls, and subflooring, linking from insulator knob to insulator knob. This wiring method is extremely dangerous and can still be found in use today. It is important to replace such a system as soon as possible to meet the current building and safety code. Wiring with aluminum is an example of a common building practice that was later found to be unsafe. Aluminum was used in wiring homes between 1965 and 1973, when the price of copper was high. During this time, the National Electric Code approved the metal and about 1.5 million homes were wired with aluminum. Later, it was found that the branch circuits that run throughout the house would dangerously overheat, resulting in fires. Some studies have shown that houses wired with aluminum wiring are 50 times more likely to have electrical problems than houses wired with copper. A good way to make sure that your house is not wired with aluminum wiring is to check the main electrical panel. Look at where the wire insulation is stripped back and is making a metal on metal connection to the breaker. Here you can see that the wiring used is copper. On the contrary, aluminum wiring would look like this. Additionally, you should check the outlets and switches of the house to see if aluminum wiring was used. It is highly encouraged that you contact a licensed electrician if the use of aluminum wiring is found in the home. An electrician can ensure that newer outlets and switches specifically designed to maintain proper contact with aluminum wire are installed, improving the stability of the system. Though there is not much testing of the electrical system that a walkthrough can accomplish, you can, however, be informed and ask the right questions. If you ever have any concerns regarding the electrical system in the home you are looking at, have a licensed electrical contractor examine the house. Check throughout the house for any open circuit boxes or missing cover plates, as well as for any exposed or loose wiring. Loose wiring prevents the correct function of the electrical system by not maintaining proper contact between the circuits. For safety reasons, loose wiring should be fixed immediately. Extension cords should never be used as permanent wiring. They're not in accordance with state electrical codes and can create a fire hazard. Look at the electrical service connection to the house. Find out if it is an overhead or underground connection. If the connection is overhead, visually inspect to see that the connection is securely fastened to the house. Ensure that there are no trees overhanging the wires in any way. Check to see that the wires are in good condition and that the insulation and wires look somewhat new and have no metal showing. If the house's utilities are underground, access is limited to the local utility company, which will maintain them. Problems are rare concerning underground power lines. Look at the service panel located on the outside of the home. Check to see if you have breakers or fuses. If a fuse panel is discovered, then it needs to be replaced with a modern breaker panel. Check to see the size of the main breaker. The size is printed on the main breaker switch, usually the largest in the panel. On a medium-sized home, a 100 amp main breaker is adequate. You may see 125 or 200 amp breakers depending on the size of the home. A medium-sized home using a breaker smaller than 100 amps will probably not have enough capacity to meet the electricity demands of a 21st century lifestyle. A new larger service panel will need to be installed. New breaker panels cost one to $2,000. This change should be implemented promptly to ensure safety in the home. Over time, the residential electrical code has improved, adding safety measures to residential wiring. The ground wire was added to the existing hot and neutral. You can recognize this feature with its distinctive three-hole outlet. This allowed appliances, lights, and other devices to be grounded, which safely completes the circuit. Many older homes do not have this safety feature, which should be upgraded to conform to modern safety and building codes. A great safety feature that was incorporated after 1973 was the use of GFCI, or ground fault circuit interrupter circuits. These circuits monitor the current flowing to and from the outlet. If the current flow differs by a very small amount, 
The GFCI instantly interrupts the current flow, preventing electric shock to the consumer. Generally, these outlets are installed in areas of the house that are prone to grounding issues with water, like in the bathrooms, outdoor outlets, or in the garage. Check to see if the bathrooms are outfitted with GFCI outlets. They can be found as a single GFCI outlet in one room of the house or as a GFCI breaker in the main panel. If no GFCI circuits are installed in the house, this is a major concern that should be addressed by an electrical contractor in order to make the home a safer place in which to live. Air conditioning is a very common home feature. Generally, there are two sizes of air conditioners. Room air conditioners, used to cool just one room, and central air conditioners, used to cool the entire house. The air conditioning unit should provide a 20 degree change in air temperature when functioning properly. During the colder months of the year, it is difficult to measure if the air conditioning is working properly because even if the unit produces cold air when it is cold outside, this does not ensure that the unit can perform the same when it is hot outside. Ensure that the cable connecting the unit to the power supply is in good condition and properly connected. Note that central air units are connected to their own circuit box and supply cutoff switch. The air conditioner should be inspected annually to make sure that the overall condition of the air conditioner looks good and there is not any debris, mold, or fungi growth on the coils of the unit that may prevent airflow or contaminate the house. The heater is another important area to inspect and be aware of. Its electrical connection should be evaluated closely and inspected to make sure it is in good condition. There should not be any rust on the unit and the overall condition of the heater should appear good. The heater's flame should be a dark blue. If you see a yellow or orange flame burning, this indicates that the heater is dirty and is not efficiently burning the gas. Make sure the pilot light or the electronic ignition is working and the heater fan turns on when the temperature of the gas burner increases. Additionally, make sure the heater fan shuts off after the burner shuts off and the unit is cool. Hot water heaters are either electric or gas. An electric hot water heater is a closed system and is difficult to inspect. Check the overall appearance of the system for any rust and areas that do not look normal. Make sure that the water heater is strapped securely to the wall so that the heater does not move and cannot in any way fall over. For gas water heaters, usually the heater is found in the garage of the home. Given that there is a pilot flame that is always on with gas heaters, the heater has to be installed around 18 inches above the garage floor. This is to prevent the pilot flame from igniting any automobile fumes that might be present in the garage. Again, make sure that the heater is strapped properly so there is no way that the tank can fall over in the event of an earthquake or other disaster and rupture the gas line. Additional items to look for on both types of water heaters is that there is a water supply shutoff valve located on the pipe before it enters the water heater. This is just in case there is a problem with a water leak to the tank so that the water can be shut off immediately. Next, ensure there are no signs of burnt walls or smoke residue on the side of the tank. If this is found, the problem needs to be addressed immediately. Most important, make sure that the water heater temperature is set so that the heated water cannot scald your skin or small children if direct contact to the hot water is experienced somewhere else in the house.